Uh, today, I wanted to talk about really uh, something that's been on my mind a lot this year, which is, you know, how do you create, how do you create your life and, and what's, what's in a good life? And, and it really started for me by, you know, achieving a lot of the things that I had set out to achieve uh, and go, okay, well, what's next? What's important? What, what do I value? And so, uh, you know, I started to look around at some of the, the training and the, the first uh, type of training uh, or, or first model that, that came to or how, what is life about was, the, was Maslow's hierarchy. And uh, how many of you know Maslow's hierarchy? Uh, Man's an amazing thinker, amazing, amazing mind. And I'm going to summarize the hierarchy a little bit here so that we can, we can be fast. Uh, at the base, there's safety needs. And these safety needs involve, you know, shelter, food, warmth, these sort of things. These are our first base needs. You know, uh, after we get through uh, safety needs, then there's psychological needs. So this is, you know, uh, connection, love, companionship, friendship, social needs, psychological needs. So, you know, those are sort of things. And then the, at the top is esteem. So this is, uh, you know, where you, you actually create meaning in your life, you know, self-actualization, esteem needs. And uh, I know this is a complete summary and this is not how he, he wrote it at all. So it's a, it's a summary so we can move fast. The idea is that, uh, you know, you, you build up your safety needs, then, then your psychological, then your, then your esteem needs, knowing that if you, if you don't have these, if you don't have, you know, a roof over your head and food on the table, that's what matters the most. Um, next, you know, having uh, love and connection and psychological needs met is next. And then finally come right up here to the, the top, which is self-actualization. So I started out reading uh, and understanding that and thought, okay, well, that's a very interesting model. Uh, I quite like that. The next, the next thing that I read uh, or, or, or wanted to dive into is one of my heroes, Buckminster Fuller. And uh, I went and read about Bucky and, and understanding it. If you don't know about uh, Buckminster Fuller, you really should research him. He was a, another great thinker. And, and he, he had this idea. He said, well, it seems to me that we're all here for a reason or for a purpose, because if we don't believe that, uh, then why are we here? So we have to believe that there is some sort of reason or purpose and uh, he, he decided that his reason or purpose was, was to be the, the, the best version of himself and to give to others. And I was like, right, okay, well, that, and he, he, he really did. He was very successful, made, you know, made a big impact and a, a massive impact on my life, actually, as well. And so I was like, right, well, that makes sense. We're, to assume we're all here for a reason, it's, it's a big assumption. I mean, we got no way to prove it, but he, he said, I mean, how, you can't test for or against it. So if you have that premise, that's good. So, so I quite liked um, that assumption. You know, uh, so, I, so I kept on thinking and I was like, well, you know, what, what else is there out there? And uh, those of you know that I, I also really interested in uh, Joseph Campbell's work in The Hero's Journey. And uh, The Hero's Journey is, is you know, based on you know, some really great understanding from Freud and Jung, uh, Carl Jung. And, and I think Joseph Campbell really articulated it well. And you see it in all our movies. You know, it, nearly, it nearly is, um, you know, so obvious. Brie loves me talk, going through movies with The Hero's Journey. But basically, The Hero's Journey starts out with a, with a call to adventure. And this call uh, sets us out on our path. As we go on this path, we have challenges. And we find mentors. And as we move through, we end up in a big transformation. This transformation leads us to success. S-U-C-C-E-S-S, -S -S, success. And success brings us back home. Uh, and we, we come back uh, home to start another one. And anyway, so that's again another, another summary. Then we find another call to adventure. And we see this in all of our movies. Uh, we see it everywhere, you know, you, you know, Luke Skywalker, he's, he's there with his, his uncle and auntie and, and, you know, he comes and uh, it gets destroyed and he, so he's called to a new adventure, he's faced with challenges, he has mentors, Yoda and Obi-Wan, he has to transform himself, he has to learn to use the force, which leads to success, he comes out the other side, comes back home, returns, realizes that he's the son of, uh, you know, a Jedi master and he has a sister and all of these things and you, you'll see it consistently in every single movie. Uh, and in fact, uh, there's a lot of research that says we go on uh, seven year, seven year 
uh, cycles where we have a, a different adventure, a different call every seven years, zero to seven unconscious development, uh, seven to 14 conscious development, 14 to 21 puberty, 21 to 28 identity, uh, 28 to, to 35. Uh, our place in the world, 35. Uh, for, by the way, at 42 is the, 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 where the most divorces are initiated at age 42. Then it's a 49, a 56. Anyway, so it carries on these seven-year journeys. And we find a lot of people uh, coming into uh, a new core, a new adventure uh, every seven years. So, so I looked at that and I started thinking, okay, well, well that's a really, really, really interesting uh, model, you know, that... There are these, these different things that we get called to, to, to shift. And um, I was like, okay, so that's, so I, you know, I'm starting to piece these together, you know, going, right, well, what's it all about? I've got this, you know, this Maslow model. Uh, I've got this, this call to adventure, you know, Campbell model, which it kind of fits. I mean, this doesn't really talk about safety needs. It kind of says, you know, you're called to adventures, but, but I also know that I'm not ready to go on an adventure if my safety needs, you know, if we're being attacked, uh, the adventure is to to create a safe uh, a safe environment. So if I don't have a roof over my head, that's what I'm looking for. So so I like that those two can kind of fit together. Uh, obviously, uh, you know the, the the whole world has been changed by a piece of paper uh, from the United States, and um, you know this piece of paper says you know everyone has the right to pursue happiness. And uh, I think that was a really big claim, and it really shaped the world. It says you know every uh, you know every one of us has the right to pursue happiness and and uh, and that's an uh, american constitution to be able to pursue happiness go for happiness and uh how many of my, my people from the states you know uh you know really get that you know we all have the right to to pursue happiness and to go for happiness and, and we're allowed to do that i mean that that idea uh changed the world to pursue happiness and i think it's uh it's one of the best things that's come out of that uh you know that that thinking so, so I'm putting all this together, right? And then at the same time, I'm thinking, okay, so what, what is it? What is it? So then I go, right, well, I'm going to go down and look at religion. I mean, it's there. I mean, obviously, uh, a lot of people are called to religion. So why? And I said, like, what's, what's religion about? And, and, and what's the And So as I studied it and looked at it all, what I realized is nearly every single, well, well the, the few major ones, they have this idea that if you're really good now, then you're going to be rewarded uh, later in whatever comes after this life. And so the idea is there's a way to be, you've got to be good now. And then there's this, this thing that we can't really test for uh, that you're going to get rewarded. You know, there's, there's going to be a heaven or if you don't do it, there's going to be a hell or there's going to be you know, uh, all sorts waiting for you. So, so they're right. Well, that's, that's really interesting. You know, be, be a certain way now, do good now. And, and I thought, okay, well, that's, that's fascinating too. And as I piece it all together, there was a last thing that was really like sort of, you know, I guess niggling at me. And it's this idea that if you actually think about what we are, if you actually think about what we are, we're, we're, we're a collection of billions of cells, and every single cell wants to reproduce. It wants to, uh, you know, survive. It wants to get the right nutrients. It needs to, you know, we're, we're all these cells. We're just a cell wanting to reproduce and create more cells. And in order to reproduce uh, our DNA, uh, you know, then we need all the safety and, the, uh, and needs. And we need to be able to make sure that we find, a, you know, a different partner. And, and, you know, two cells get excited before they create a new one. And I was like, wow, that's so fascinating. That's literally like us as humans getting all excited. And we make songs about how excited we are about the idea of uh, reproduction, you know? And I was like, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. It's like we, we have, uh, we, we really only have a few things that, that are important to us. We need to have, uh, you know, uh, food, uh, and we, we need to make sure that we're, we're, we're safe. We need to make sure that we're, uh, that we're, we're looked after we need to make sure that we reproduce we need these these are what the cells after and so it seems that because we're this cell trying to uh reproduce itself we've created all this story you know we've created all this story the f words yeah that's right we we have fight um flight freeze and the last thing that's important is reproduction 
And, uh, and you know, as Chris, Christy said those, if you look in the chat box, that came from Christy, not, not me. And, uh, and so we've created a lot of story to help us to, to, uh, to continue creating, uh, you know, the, the collection of cells that we are. So, you know, for example, uh, you, you know, those of us that, that uh, have more than others feel the need to give it away. This is because we as, as a unit want to keep the, the species moving forward. And so if we're a collection of cells looking to continually um, recreate our, and reproduce our DNA, what we've done is created all the stories so that we all work together and don't annihilate each other. <clears throat> and it's, it's fascinating to go, okay, well, a lot of the things that we believe are good actually come back to this this idea well you need to you know collaborate with others so that you're safe so that you belong and you go right well a lot of the stuff that we've been trained or programmed comes back to this this idea of creating safety and belonging and ensuring that for for one of a better word that our that our species continues and yeah you, you actually think about it, right like why do why are we so scared of rejection well rejection means that you are not part of the, the tribe anymore, which means your ability to reproduce your, your genes goes down significantly. Why do you want to have more resources than someone else? Well, if you have you know, more resources, more, more food or more shelter, more, well, then what well, you have more of it, well, then it increases the chances that you know, you're going to uh, pass on your genes. Why is it that you want to you know, uh, earn more or achieve more well, that's because we've decided that that is, a, is an attractive way to be, or that's impressive. And it, it just comes back to these things. And so, so I put this all apart, right? And I'm going, wow. So, so what's it all about? Because there I was, you know, sitting there, uh, kind of reached the top of the mountain that I thought that was, was ever possible, you know? I was like, uh, uh, what's next? basically what what's next because i'd i'd, I'd uh, you know I'd, I'd made all the money for lifetimes uh, i've got lifetimes amount of money you know that's that's taken care of uh got this got that's so like what's what's going on what's next and so so i started to really sit with this idea of well what is the answer with with all of this and read all these books and and some of it fit together and some of it didn't and so i actually i got some answers for you which I think is going to going to be good. So um, I, I read after going around it all, uh, I came back uh, to uh, to Bucky Buckminster Fuller, and so you know he said start off with the biggest thing, the biggest truth that you can start off with. Okay, so the biggest truth, and if you if you write this down, the biggest the biggest truth that we can all agree on is that and is that we are a creative being. We're a creative essence, a creative spirit, a creative being, what it creative energy. And in this vehicle, we have between 80 and 110 years to experience it. Can I get an agreement? Is, is that, I mean, is in this vehicle, we have 80 to 100 years to experience it. Maybe 110 for some of us, maybe 81 for some. But that, you know, that seems about right. Now, if you if you look at that, you go, okay, right. Well, that's uh, that makes that makes sense. The next thing that I thought was, okay, well, out of everything that that's here, you know the 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 call to adventure the hero's journey the pursuit of happiness the the safety psychological and esteem needs you know you you look at it all okay right so the stories that we've all um, passed on to each other and and the infinite uh, amount of ways that that someone chooses to experience um, you know their experience their their life. The success of those 80 to 100 or something years depends on how you feel about it. The success of those years depends on how you feel about it. And, and, and let me just, before you say yes, that you agree to that, 
It does, so you can find someone in Fiji who doesn't have much compared to somebody in New York, but they could feel great about it and vice versa. It, it's if someone can feel absolutely uh, amazing being of service and not having much. Someone can feel absolutely terrible having loads, right? It's the success of it isn't what it is you do or have or be, whether you have a large family or no family, or whether you have, uh, you know, loads of friends or worldwide fame, or you're a this or you're a that, or you you grow your own vegetables and have an eco-tourist tourist, uh, situation, or you're just out by yourself thinking about it. Doesn't it make sense that none of it really matters unless it's how you feel about it? I mean, you could go help millions and millions of people inside a charity, and I'm sure you could feel great about it, or you could feel that it's not enough. You could, and this was something that was really, can I just say, who, who agrees with that? It's actually not what you do. It's actually not what you achieve. It's actually not what others say about you. It's actually none of that. It's how you feel about it. Some people can, can get immense criticism and feel fine about it. Other people have one person say one bad thing one time, and that's it. It's not about the situation or the circumstances. It's uh, does everyone? Can I just get there? Do you guys agree with that? So it's actually not what you do. You, you know, some people are completely satisfied that they that they um, have a roof over their heads and, and they're fine with it. And so I started thinking about that even more. I was like, right, so it's not what we have or what we achieve or what we do or what we create. It's actually, you know, what how we feel about what those things are. And so what was interesting is I said, okay, well, this is interesting. This is interesting thinking. So, you know, the, uh, I'm a, I've got this vehicle. It's going to last, you know, 80 to 110 years. What I do in that time really matters about what I feel about it. Uh, uh, who knows what happens next, you know, as it was, I know this for sure. And uh, and part of that, if we do have a belief of, of that we need to be good now so that something good happens next, that would be part of how we feel about it. Well, you know, we would feel good about, uh, you, you know, sacrificing or, or doing things the right way. That would be a good feeling. So we would do it. We would feel good about it. And I was like, wow, okay, right. That is a that is a big truth. It doesn't matter what you do or what you believe, or it's how you feel about it. And it seems that as an organism, um, we, we've, we've been given this guiding system and the guiding system is called our feelings. And uh, does, does this make sense? And our, and our feelings are there to help us know what's good, what's bad for the organism. This is really important. If you walk in along and you, you hear a rustling in the bushes, you might feel worried or scared about what's there, right? And that's important and, and it's, it's built into us because there might be a snake there. There might be something bad there. So, you know, when, when our um, friends reject us or, you know, we get laughed at in, uh, in front of the, the school classroom, we feel bad about it because it feels like a separation from the tribe. So these feelings are there for a reason that they're, they're important and uh and uh, they're needed. They're really needed. So, so I was like, okay, right. This makes a lot of sense. It's like, okay, so it's about how I feel. So then I asked myself the next question, and now I want to ask you this question. I was like, right. So, if if those if that holds true, right, as a premise, then the question is, how do I choose to feel over the next eighty or, or you know whatever it is you know fifty let fifty fifty or sixty or how 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 do I choose to feel in whatever time frame is left? And that's my question to all of you. So how would you like to feel? What are the what are the feelings? I'll share you my list actually. I'll get my my list up now. I've got it on my phone here. So I asked myself, what are the feelings that I want to feel? What do I want to feel? And, um, and it was a really big thing. I was like, okay, so if number one, if the biggest picture that I'm a creative being, have a human experience for roughly 100 years, and if what makes a good life is how I feel about it, then, well, what feelings do I want to feel? And I was like, all right, well, here we go. Here, here's my list, right? Here's my list. I was like, well, I want to feel love. I want to feel purpose. I want to feel contribution. I want to feel success. I want to feel competition. I want to feel learning. I want to feel friendship. I want to feel healthy. I want to feel full of energy. I want to feel connected to source. And, and that was it. I was like, well, that, those are those are what's important to me. I was like, that, that's what I want to feel. I was like, right. 
And so I was like, okay, so, so that's what I want to feel. And I really suggest that you think about this. It's like, what is it that you want to feel? Because once you decide on that, that's your guiding point. That's your North Star. The other question you're going to ask is, what do you not want to feel? You know, what do you not want to feel, right? I don't want to feel frustration or angst or poverty or lack or scarcity. What, you know, what is it that you don't want to feel? So anyway, so I, so I asked myself, that, I was like, right, so that, that's basically it. And so I have some extra thoughts for you. Are you guys enjoying this? This is just, this is thoughts from my notes. I have some extra, extra thoughts. I mean, because we're going to go next is, um, you know, what's, what gives you those feelings? So, so here's some, here was a thought. I said, okay, so... If I go back to, to Maslow, I'm not going to be able to feel good if I don't have my safety needs met. You know, if I don't have, you know, food, roof over my head, warmth, those sort of things, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to feel good. I mean, I'm just, I mean, that, that's not a good feeling to me to be worried about where money's coming from or whether I have enough food or shelter or warmth, that, that doesn't feel good to me. So I was like, right. So the first question that I must share with my, my group today is this question. How do I make the most amount of money in the smallest amount of time so I can spend rest of my time doing things that don't require money as an objective? I'll read it again, because I think it's a very important question. How do I make the most amount of money in the smallest amount of time, so I can spend the rest of the time on things that don't require money as an objective. I was like, right, how do I do that? And I was like, well, because that's going to be the first question my audience asks. They're going to say, well, Chris, how do I get that sorted? And so, you know, uh, that, that's, a, that's a good question. And, and it comes down to there's, there's, some, there's some places uh, in where you can make, make more with a really small amount of time, you know, high ticket sales, uh, marketing, um, starting a business. These are all really important. Uh, and there's, there's lots of other ways as well. But that was a really good question. And so once, once I had that, I thought, right, so then the next question is, how do I max out what it is that feels the best for me? So if you go back to what I wrote down, I said, so what feelings do I want? Love, purpose, contribution, success, competition, learning, friendship, healthy, full of energy, connection to source. So I said, okay, so what gives me those feelings? I was like, what gives me those feelings? Because I want to design my life. I want to design something that's really important. So I thought, okay, so I want to design my life. So here's what gives me those feelings, which are love, purpose, contribution, success, competition, learning, friendship, healthy, full of energy, connected to source. That's what, what gives me those feelings. Sleeping well, eating well, time with my wife, teaching a seminar, making money, hitting goals, watching sport, coaching, playing sport, listening to music, having people around uh, uh, for barbecues, for fun times, coming up with business ideas, travel, writing books, making a difference. That's it. That's my list. And I was like, wow. And I looked at that list and I tell you what, it really surprised me because it wasn't that big. You know, it was like actually, so I ended up naming whatever I'm talking about right now. I don't know if you guys can see it. I ended up naming this a simple life plan <laughs> because I was like sleeping, eating while time with my wife, teaching seminars, making money, hitting goals, watching sport, coaching, playing sport, listening to music, having people around barbecue, fun times, coming out of business ideas, travel, writing books, making a difference. I was like, that's not that many things, right? That's, that's just not that many things. I was like, that's, that's, and so, so here's the questions. It's okay. What feelings do you want to feel? What do you not want to feel? And then what gives you those feelings? And then the next question I asked myself, I said, okay, great. So how do I structure my life for the maximum chance of these good feels? It's literally how I wrote it. Is that on there? You guys can't see it. There we go. How do I structure my life for maximum good feels? That was, that was it. And it's such an important thing to ask. So I was like, well, it's, it's not that difficult because there's not that many things. So I was like, well, how do I structure it? And, and I think that, that right now, if you're here in Magnetic Mind, you have an opportunity to just set your life uh, how you want it to be. 
Do you, who agrees with that? You just actually get to go, this is how I would like my life. And this is how I would like to um, provide value to the world and make money. And this is how I would like it to be. This is how I would like to feel. This is how I want. This is how I choose it. And it doesn't have to be this difficult, complicated yeah. thing. Right? It can be a simple life plan. That's a good Kiwi band. Right? It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't have to be this complicated thing. You simply can say, okay, well, this vehicle will last around about 100 years or so. And I'm having a, an experience of it. What matters in this experience is how I feel about things. So what is it that I want to feel? What gives me those feelings the most? How do I structure my life to be doing those things so I have those feels? And, and the reason why I believe this to be so crucial is so many people are not the predominant creative force in their life. They're, you know, one of our sayings is create your life, don't complain. They, they're so worried about complaining and making things complicated. You know, they need 10 businesses for, for what, you know, or they need, uh, you know, to be doing a hundred degrees or uh, reading all these books or, you know, it's like, what is it that you really want to feel? <clears throat> right. What is it? And then you break it down. So the question I have for everybody here, by the way, can I check in? Is this good stuff? It's just good stuff. Is what stops you, you know, doing this? Like what, why is it that we don't have this? Right? Like if, if it's if it's so simple, then what stops us just having it? You know, it's like, gosh. Because what could be more successful than creating a life you love? What could be more successful than, than going, you know, for my, my time here, I, I felt good. I felt good about what I did. I felt good about my experience. I felt good. Like what's a higher value than feeling good? So my question uh, for all of us is go, well, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Like what could be more important than that? And, and the thing is, is if it feels really good to sacrifice, then that, that feels good. See, some people go, well, you know, if I only did what, what felt good, well, then I wouldn't sit down and do my tax. Well, yeah, you would, because the consequences of not doing the tax or not doing these things are they lead you somewhere you don't want to be, right? Which is a bad feeling. True. And it's like, you know, oh, well, you know, I don't like to do chores. Well, do you really want to live in a dirty house? Like, you know, so, so, you, so you, you, it's feeling good also includes the consequence, not just short term. So here's my question uh, for all of you. Just notice however, um, however you answer it is perfect. However it shows up today is perfect. The question is, what would you like to create? 